there's a holiday comet in the in the sky right now. Uh, comet Ithon, uh, deep uh, in coming in deep from the Oort cloud, uh, making a swing around the sun on Thanksgiving Day uh, on November 28th. Uh, with us today is Dr. Michelle Thaler of uh, NASA's uh, Goddard Space Flight Center in Maryland. And uh, Dr. Thaler, thanks so much for for being here today. Hey, great to be here. Thank you. Well, Comet Ithon, you know, making what could be a once-in-a-lifetime trip for most of us around the sun. Why, uh, why is it interesting to NASA and, and scientists around the world? Well, you know, the, the wonderful thing about comets is that they're actually time capsules from the very formation of our solar system. You know, four and a half billion years ago, there were no planets. There were just these chunks of, of ice and rock, and eventually gravity brought them together to form planets. And comets literally are the leftovers of this process. So this comet has been out in what we call the Oort Cloud, this collection of, of, of chunks of ice many, many millions of miles away. And it now is falling in towards the sun. The sun is heating it up. Gases are boiling off. And we actually have a chance to get a pristine sample of what our solar system was like when it formed. As far as we know, this comet has never been around the sun before. And when you said this is a once-in-a-lifetime thing, we don't think this comet is ever coming back either. If it does, it will be in many millions of years. So, so th this is really a wonderful chance for us to actually get a, a, a we, we're going to study, actually see what an early part of the solar system is made of. Well, that's, that sounds great, and, and it, seems, it seems, though, that um, ISON has really dominated amateur astronomers and NASA and professionals uh, around the world for, for the last year, and, and we know that there's a lot of folks watching it now, spacecraft and, um, and observers alike, and I was wondering if you can give us an, an idea of, uh, of that whole campaign, why this comet uh, has really been an opportunity to kind of bridge that amateur uh, professional gap. Well, you know, as you mentioned, this comet was only discovered a little bit more than a year ago, and people have been watching it. And, and the wonderful thing about NASA is we actually have a fleet of spacecraft that has all been observing this comet. It's been observed by Hubble, by Messenger, and now when it gets close to the sun, our solar observatories take over like SDO. SDO took this wonderful image of Comet Lovejoy actually making a very close passage around the sun a couple years ago. So that comet survived, and these are relatively rare to actually catch in, in this wonderful high-resolution way that SDO can observe. This will only be the third time. And the, the neat thing about catching these comets as they get very close to the sun is that we can actually use them as a probe to see what conditions are like close to the sun itself. The magnetic field, the solar wind, it actually gives us a chance to actually throw something in there, see how it reacts as it goes around the sun, and we're going to learn more about the way the sun works as well. Now, we heard a lot of uh, uh, predictions and forecasts uh, over the last, uh, the last year that Ison could be the the comet of the century, uh, or or it could fizzle out in a <laughs> in a in a big whimper. And and you mentioned just the the survival aspect um, of this of this uh, this pass coming up on Thursday. Um, and you know what what are the odds that that this this comet uh, you know could could get obliterated by the sun when it swings within uh, what is that about 730,000 miles? That's right. It's actually going to go just you know a little bit less than one diameter of the sun away from the surface of the sun. It's getting very close. The odds are something we actually can't calculate because that depends on the intrinsic structure of the comet. The comet, as we mentioned, is lots of ice and lots of dirt. We really don't know how dense it is. We know it's about 2 billion tons of ice. It's about one mile across. But we don't really know how easily it's going to be pulled apart as it goes around the sun. If it does survive the sun, then we should be in for a really nice show. You know, starting in early December, you'll actually be able to see it fairly close to dawn in the sky. It's actually very close to the sun. And then as December goes on, it'll get farther away from the sun and be up in the night sky. By the time you get to mid to late December, I would look up uh, sort of by the Big Dipper. It should be up there if it survives the sun. Now, if it doesn't survive the solar passage and it breaks up into many little chunks, in some ways that's actually even better for NASA because we're going to get a really good view of the interior of the comet. Instead of one big chunk of ice, now we have lots of little chunks that are all radiating and giving us information. So it sort of depends, you know, the amateur community and the, the professional community, we're, we're definitely going to learn some wonderful things about this comet, whether or not it survives the solar passage. Now, uh, many of our readers uh, have been concerned just about the idea of, of a comet swinging by the sun. Um, and, uh, you know, we know from, from, from the, the images from SOHO, SDO, and others that sun grazers are relatively common. If, if you can kind of touch on that, why folks shouldn't be afraid of this uh, 
this comet's uh, solar flyby uh, and even its Earth cloaked approach later in December? Well, that's right. As you mentioned before, with, with our solar observatories, we've actually seen many hundreds, even thousands of these small sun grazing comets. And this one is actually not coming anywhere near the Earth. The closest approach it'll get to the Earth is actually going to be in late December, where it'll get on the order of about 40 million miles away from us. Now, that's not very close. And even if the comet breaks up into many different little chunks, all of those chunks will keep following roughly the same orbit. So this is not something that we're worried about any type of risk. This is just sort of a gift from the cosmos, giving us this wonderful preserved piece of our past, giving us a chance to study the early solar system, but there's no risk at all of an impact. You mentioned that Comet Icon is, is likely never coming back. Where where does it go after this <laughs> uh, this flyby around the sun? Well, back out into the Oort cloud. You know, the Oort cloud is this very, very tenuous, distant cloud made of little chunks of ice and rock, and it probably extends almost half the way out to the nearest star. So, you know, up to almost two light years away, there's this very diffuse cloud. And from what we know of the orbit right now, it should just actually escape entirely back up into that Oort cloud. It may never come back again. And uh, if it does ever come back again, it'll be in many millions of years. So, yeah, this is a, a once-in-a-lifetime chance to see this comet. You mentioned, you know, the, the, the possibility of, of folks being able to see the comet if it survives uh, through December. And, and, of course, all of the science uh, that you'll get back one way or another, depending on what happens. Um, but I was wondering if you could kind of give us an idea of what... Um, maybe what your favorite comet might be, and, and just for the general sense, what is it about comets that maybe grabs the, the wonder of, of, of folks, uh, you know, scientists and non-scientists alike? Well, you know, I remember how beautiful Hale-Bopp was, you know, back in the, uh, the late 90s. So it's been a while since we've had a really, really wonderful, visible, naked eye comet. And uh, as we said before, we just don't know about this one. We, we can't say whether it's going to be lovely or not. But the, the thing that really does intrigue me, and I, I know I've said this a couple of times, but this really is a part of our past. I mean, imagine having a, a fossil, something from the early solar system, and nothing has changed. Everything on the Earth has been melted, it's been changed over billions and billions of years. This was probably a piece of our actual planetary formation process here, you know, the stuff that makes us up. NASA has actually flown spacecraft through the tails of comets. And when we did that, we actually, dis we actually discovered amino acids, which are the molecules that make up our proteins, you know, the basis of our DNA. These sorts of things are actually inside the tails of comets themselves. And uh, one of my favorite comet uh, events was actually when we had the Stardust mission, which literally impacted into a comet. This was in 2005, on July 4th. We actually flew something to smash into a comet so we could see what, what was inside. We find lots of organic molecules, different kinds of ices. Uh, for that particular comet, there were even things like spindle crystals, things that make up gems. So th they're, they're wonderful pieces of the pristine cosmos and a chance to study where we came from. And, uh, and I guess throughout, throughout history, uh, there, there, there's been kind of a, a stigma, it seems, associated with, uh, with visible, mm. uh, visible comets, uh, like their harbingers and whatnot. Um, but it seems like there's not, you know, there's there's a little there's a little more to that uh, aside from the, the visible, you know, celestial show. Um, uh, you know, I was just wondering if, if you had any thoughts about what what really makes comets to folks on the ground, non-scientists. Uh, you know, what, what really just grabs them when they see them in the night sky? Well, you know, I, I think at first the idea of a comet was very frightening. I mean, as you mentioned, comets were often thought of as bad omens. Something was changing in the sky. And to early people that didn't understand astronomy or, or, or where these comets were coming from, think about how frightening that would have been to all of a sudden see this, this large glowing thing with a tail appear in the sky and then disappear. It must mean that something bad is going to happen. And, of course, we do believe that perhaps some of the mass extinctions on the Earth were caused when either comets or asteroids, more rocky chunks of things, fell on us. You know, the dinosaur impact, for example. So comets do have a little bit of this idea of disaster, the, the bad star is where that, that word comes from. Uh, but it's also a, a common part of the environment of the solar system. We see comets all the time in the sky. We see them grazing by the sun, most of them just breaking up you know, into little bits of ice. The, uh, the, the Earth itself actually accumulates about 100 tons of material a day from space, you know, chunks of rock falling down on us, little bits of dirt, all of that. So this is just the environment we find ourselves in. And we know that this comet is safe. We know it's not going to hit us. We know it's absolutely pristine and unchanged. So this is just a gift. You know, it's a wonderful holiday gift for all of us scientists. <laughs> Well, uh, you know, that's great. I think I have time for just one last question, and that'll be it for me. But you mentioned holidays. Um, uh, Python making its close approach on, 
on Thanksgiving Day, will you be having turkey uh, <laughs> while you're watching it come in? Wh where are you going to be? Well, you know, the, the funny thing is I think the astronomers will be working through Thanksgiving. You know, while, while many people are home roasting their turkeys, the sun is going to be roasting this comet, and that's what we want to see. Uh, you can actually see live downloads of images. We're going to have a Google Plus Hangout. So if you go to our website, go to www.nasa.gov slash ISON. And Thanksgiving Day, uh, we hope to actually have images downloading live. We're going to be having commentary about what the comet seems to be doing. So it's going to be a busy day for a lot of us at NASA. Great. Well, we, we, can't, look, uh, we can't wait for that. And uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Thumman, for, for all of your uh, help today. And looking forward to the event. Great. Thank you very much.